aggression and violence, clearly fundamentals of the animal world. But from where in an animal's brain does such behavior emanate? And if we found such a site in an animal, could this volatile area also be located in the animal part of the human brain? An early experiment to locate the whereabouts of animal rage was performed on a bull in a Spanish bull ring. This strange archival film tells the story. In the 1960s, Professor Jose Delgado took a normally hostile bull and implanted electrodes into its brain, electrodes that could be activated by a radio transmitter. His objective was to see if stimulation of the bull's midbrain could short-circuit the rage signals, stopping the bull before it reached the matador. After the bull had recovered from the implantation and in mid-charge, the button was pressed. The bull's aggression ceased instantly, or so it seemed. A clearer experiment was performed with cats. In this classic example, the hypothalamus, the rhythm maker, was implanted with electrodes. Could it be responsible not just for rhythms, but also for rage? The switch is turned. Then the switch is turned off. So indeed, the hypothalamus does control certain types of aggression. Now how could one possibly confirm this startling finding in human beings? Meet Mark Laribus. My name is Mark Laribus. I feel that I'm a pretty easygoing guy. I try to get along with circumstances as best as I can. He's still the minister of society. In the Sacramento Criminal Court, Mark Laribus was accused of assaulting and almost killing his girlfriend's two-and-a-half-year-old daughter. Uh, it's hard to remember. It's been quite a while ago about the incident itself with the child. But, um... I remember her crying, and uh, I was I was laying on the couch, and then all of a sudden it just really got to me. And uh, I rushed in there, and I remember hitting her. But I don't know why. I could never I could never pinpoint why. I mean, nobody just goes up to a child and starts beating on them for no reason like that. Even with my own daughter, if she cries, I I try to ask her why she's crying. Or and in, in since in a baby, you, you check them to see if they're wet or if they're hungry. But this time, it just really made me explode. Mark Andrew Larivis, the man accused of molesting and almost killing a two-year-old girl, was to have had a date set today for his preliminary hearing. But Larivis is in the University Medical Center, where doctors have discovered some sort of tumor or growth in his brain. I first met uh, Mark about three days after the assault. He had become depressed and even suicidal and was admitted to our hospital to the psychiatric unit. This allowed us to begin a diagnostic study of what might have caused the change in Mark's personality. He couldn't understand how this act could have occurred, how he could have been responsible for this kind of behavior. And yet, as we reviewed his history, it was evident that he had uh, been having more and more outbursts, um, and it had been more difficult for him to control his emotional responses to tense situations in the, in the several weeks prior to his admission. At first, he was very sweet, kind, and considerate, you know, just perfect gentleman, and then slowly but surely, things, he would be getting upset all the time. It was just, it felt like six months, then three months, and then every month, every two weeks, every week, and then it was every day. So it was just kind of like a gradual change, but it just kept getting worse and worse. I could never figure out about me losing my temper so quick. I could never understand it. He'd walk in the door and just look at me and start throwing things all over the house, come at me and strike me. I never thought about that I might have something wrong inside my brain. We began a series of routine studies for conditions of this sort. One of those was an x-ray called a CAT scan. In this study, we were able to demonstrate the fact that there was a shadow here at the end of the temporal lobe on the right side. This kind of finding suggests a tumor. We couldn't be sure from the initial findings what kind of tumor this was, 
but its location and shape at this point suggested that it was a cyst. A cyst is uh, like a, a balloon, and it slowly can fill with fluid over a period of years, increasing the pressure on the structures that are adjacent to the tumor itself. The tumor was located in an area of the brain where pressure was being exerted through the amygdala against the hypothalamus, parts of the brain thought to be involved with aggression. Five weeks after his arrest, Mark Loribus's tumor was surgically removed. When I woke up from the anesthesia, everything seemed more real to me for some reason that I could handle myself a lot better. It, uh, the world seems a whole lot better for you. He could control his temper so much better. I mean, I, I hadn't even seen him control it as good before as he did afterwards. And he was really willing to try to work things out between me and him. I never thought it could be that good for me. As though, even though the, the, I was going through a criminal trial. I'll catch you. No! Mark Larivas is now back with his family. His own daughter is nearly five years old, and his wife is expecting another child. Mark has resumed work with his former employer. Those closest to him have now relegated his violent behavior to the past. In a sense, Mark Larivas's bout with rage was an experiment that nature caused to happen. His actions demonstrate the dynamite charge the hypothalamus can detonate. While most explosions of violence cannot be dealt with by surgery, Mark's tragic experience illustrates how our animal brain invades our human days 